In this video, I'm gonna tell you about my experience using Ableton Live on an iPad using the sidecar feature recently added. The good, the bad, and yes, the ugly. I'll talk about what iPad you'll need, what the pencil can do, what you can do with touch gestures, with your fingers, and more. And I'm gonna tell you why I thought this would be a pretty cool workflow. Two really interesting applications to this kind of setup for Ableton. Remember, you'll still need to be running Ableton on your Mac to make this work. There's a lot you can do, but not everything is optimal for music making and live performance. Hopefully this video will help you decide if an iPad with Ableton is right for you. I'll also talk about some alternatives to using Sidecar. Let's get started. Let's talk about the good first. The form factor is excellent. Using an iPad just feels great. Having it on my lap while I'm lounging and being able to trigger clips, adjust the song, do a little tweaking of the mix, it works fine. You can use it wirelessly, which is awesome. You may have seen a recent video I posted on Instagram where I used Sidecar with Ableton wirelessly on the iPad, along with a wireless MIDI connector for my keyboard. Everything wireless and it worked well. I also think this is a pretty good solution if you need to work at a distance from your computer. I have a synth station kind of far from my mixing desk, and this allows me to control Ableton wirelessly from much further. So you'll need an Apple Pencil to interact with Ableton on your iPad. So what can you do with the Apple Pencil? You'll need to use the Apple Pencil to select things, basically point and click, move items, play, stop, record. They all work pretty well, with the touch of a pencil. In session view, you can trigger clips, scenes, and move clips with no problem. In arrangement view, you can move things around. You have full control of Ableton devices as well. This is a lot of fun. It's much quicker to jump to different sections of the screen than dragging your mouse. Third-party plugins work well too. I think this is a really cool way to interact with some plugins like synths but it would be so much better with multi-touch abilities. I'll get to that in a bit. I had some problems getting the pencil to drag the volume sliders, which was very frustrating. Instead of dragging, you need to click where you want the volume slider to be. Not good. The same happens when adjusting automation. The drag is just too sensitive. By the way, you can also use the left sidebar to access other keyboard features. So yeah, there are some issues, but does it get better when using your fingers for touch gestures? Let's check that out next. By the way, watch till the end because I'll tell you which iPad and Mac OS you'll need to do the stuff I've shown in this video. Also, if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I have lots of videos about Ableton tricks, tips, and a music year news series on Saturdays. I always bring you the info you need and the latest updates from the music production world. So what can you do with your fingers? Well, only gestures, and that really limits things. You can pinch to zoom, that's pretty much the best gesture. You can also scroll by swiping with two fingers. To copy, pinch in with three fingers. To paste, pinch out with three fingers. To undo, swipe left with three fingers or double tap with three fingers. To redo, swipe right with three fingers. You can't touch to select or drag, and this is where things fall apart. What would make this amazing is the ability to touch multiple things, controls, faders, knobs on the screen, and move them simultaneously. But sadly, that's not possible with your fingers or the Apple Pencil, of course. I wanna talk about the performance because there were some issues there as well. Sidecar works well most of the time, but all too often the iPad screen freezes, requiring you to disconnect your sidecar session and start it again. I find that this usually happens if I'm not interacting with the iPad for a while. Apple says that Wi-Fi interference causes this. Now you can also use sidecar while your iPad is physically connected to your Mac with a cable, and that will eliminate the wireless interference problems. That might be a good solution if you intend to keep your iPad on the desk in front of your regular monitor. I also noticed that when using sidecar, the performance of the 
CPU really took a spike. Hey, if you're recording songs at home and want to release them to the world, you should check out DistroKid, the sponsor of today's video. I use DistroKid to upload my music to Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, and everywhere else. DistroKid has released new features to help you promote your music even more. I love Spotify Canvas, which helps make your music on Spotify really stand out. Instead of boring album art, you can show your listeners a video loop. You can record and upload your own video from your smartphone as well. Also, they've added new promo cards, which are awesome. Again, making your release stand out to everyone else. Just choose one and post it on your social media. Promoting your music is so important. I've actually created two dedicated videos on DistroKid and give you all the details you need to know. You can watch those videos here. And if you're ready to sign up, I'll include a link in the video description that will give you 7% off your first year of membership. Okay, so back to Ableton and the iPad. There's a few more things you really need to know. So how does this all work? Well, it kind of works as if you're adding a display to your Mac. You go to your display preferences or up on the right toolbar of your Mac and select your iPad and that's it. Okay, so what iPad and Apple Pencil work with Sidecar and the features I showed you today. To use Sidecar, which is the Apple feature that enables the mirroring or extension of your screen, you'll need to be running Mac OS Catalina or later on your Mac computer. If you've got a Mac newer than 2016, you should be good. To run Sidecar on an iPad, you'll need to have either either an iPad Pro, an iPad Air, third gen or newer, or a sixth generation or newer iPad, or a fifth generation or newer iPad mini. Pause the screen if you need to check your compatibility. As for the pencil, it doesn't really matter which pencil, Gen 1 or Gen 2 you get, but with Gen 2, you get that magnetic feature which makes charging easier and it's also much harder to lose the pencil. No difference with what you can control with Ableton Live. So what are some alternatives to Sidecar? Well, I've been looking at this monitor which offers touch control for OS X, but it hasn't been tested very much. I don't see many videos about it. Also, there are iOS apps like Touch OSC, which give you control over Ableton. And well, there's always the option of switching to Logic, which now has Logic Remote. But I'm sure you're here because you love Ableton Live, so you'll stick with it, right? Hey, if you're looking for some inspiring sample and MIDI chord packs, check out my merch below this video for some awesome samples for trap, hip hop, EDM, and even my own virtual instrument. I've got some freebies there as well. I sampled my 1975 Rhodes electric piano and you can have that original Rhodes sound with my virtual instrument. And if you wanna support my channel, check out my t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, pillows, and more below this video. Thanks for watching, keep making the music you love, and I'll see you on Saturday. Hey, if you're producing with Ableton Live, watch one of these videos next.